Good evening and welcome into the Sports Locker, where tonight's focus is women's basketball. And where better to discuss the matter than right here on the basketball courts. Joining me are Zenia Reyes to my left, a member of the first team. And joining me on my right is the newly appointed uh, Marcelo Subiran Correct. from Uruguay. Correct. Uh, only been here for a couple of days. It's, it's a pleasure to meet you both. Welcome to the show. Uh, Zenia, before we get on to international matters, just give me a breakdown of the domestic season you play for, for one of the teams. In the local league is played weekly and it's a fun league which welcomes people from all abilities. Uh, this year there were four teams in the league. Uh, two teams were the junior selection, so the under-16 and the under-18 team. Um, the other team was us, which was the senior women team. And then the final team was a team made up of veteran players which still enjoy playing. Um, as expected, the women's team won the league undefeated, league, undefeated this year. <laughs> and is the fact that there's only four teams, I mean, does this pose a problem, do you think? Is there a lack of competition, perhaps? Could you do with, with more players, more teams? Definitely, we could definitely do with more teams, more competition. Like for us here, um, the senior women's team is basically made up of the, most of the players that play basketball at our age. So it would be great to have a lot more girls playing to make the league a bit more competitive, have more games. It would be, yeah. I suppose, you know, more, compet more competition means improvement, means a better, eventually the knock-on effect is a, is a, is a better national team. Uh, and just explain what's, what's coming up for the national team at the end of this month. Well, at the end of this month, we have the FIBA European Championships for small countries. Um, this competition is every two years and the level is pretty high. Like, um, compared to the Island Games where we normally come back with a medal, like uh, the last year we came back with a bronze, which was really good for us. Um, from the Island Games? From the yeah. Island Games, yeah. Well, this competition has countries like Andorra, Malta, which play, um, Ireland, Scotland, all play basketball at a very high level. They obviously have a lot more people to choose from, so the level is a lot higher. I mean, we'll, we'll still, it'll still be great basketball to come and watch, so it'll be a really good event for us. I've been playing basketball for a very long time, and I've never been able to play the Europeans here in Gibraltar, so I think it would be a good experience to play on my home court with the home crowd yeah. supporting us. So. I mean, do you think that, that adds pressure? Do you, or, or is it, is it, is it a, a benefit or is it a hindrance? I suppose a little bit of both? A little bit of both, I think. But um, I think it'd be great for Gibraltar to watch us and come and support and see what women's basketball is all about. Hopefully encourage um, girls to come and play in the future. And uh, leading the team uh, for this step up is the man to my right, Marcelo Subiran from, uh, from Uruguay. Marcelo, just give us a, a bit of a background into your, your basketball uh, background. Well, uh, thanks of all. Uh, thank you for coming in in our home. Uh, second, I were um, I were playing basketball a long time ago. Uh, I became professional at the age of 16, uh, signing for Dick Brogan in Lugo, and then my career started for many player, many many teams in Europe. Then I retired very quite young, about 32, 33. I wasn't that good, you know. Uh, in the end of my career, it, I had so many injuries that I decided to... What's the average age to, to, to retire as a, as a basketball player? It depends, but it, it goes average. Some people, they, they last until 35, 36. Right, okay. Uh, at high level. Eh? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so after that, I, I, I finished playing basketball and then I focused my, my career in, in uh, representing uh, players as an agent. Uh, that was a very interesting, uh, very interesting experience, very interesting experience. And then I, I wore that around uh, about eight, nine years, ten years in the business. And then um, when I finished that, I had a break, uh, I need a break. Since uh, nine years old, I've been involved with the sport. Yeah. So I want to do something different and then after passing some time, I miss basketball. It's curious, uh, and I decide to. I'm going to give myself a chance coaching, and then I had the opportunity to coach a team. They give me a team and say, "Okay, these girls, coach them." Where where was this team? In uh, in Mijas. Okay. Coach them with psychological problems. Good luck. Well, the first year we we were the champions of the of a junior level in Malaga. Then we classified to the Andalusia Championship. We finished eight from nothing. 
Then the second year we changed. Uh, I changed the club. I went to Saliver in Fuengirola. And Another tough, tough challenge. Yeah, there. definitely, because it was all new. And then a few girls that I used to be coaching, they follow me. Then this year, we again, we won the championship. We played the final of Andalusia. And we classify in the top 32 of a Spanish championship. And we ended up 18 of about 1,200 teams from nothing. Seems you've got the, the, the magic touch. What's well, the, what's the you secret? Know, the, the last day I say in a press conference, I'm not Harry Potter. I can do magic, but I'm not Harry Potter. The only thing is that, uh, uh, you know, some coaches, they, they say, oh, I'm the best. And, you know, you never know. And you always see a testing. As what, a coach. What, what, how, how would you sum up your, your coaching style? Intensive. <laughs> Intense. 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 And you've because, only had three sessions with Yeah. <laughs> because I think in, in any kind of a sport, you have to be intense. Ah, uh, football, soccer, hockey. Yes, mentally uh, motivation and mainly attitude. You, it's very simple. And this is go for every coach that is listening to me right now. You train how would you like to play? And you play how you train. So you have to train very hard, 120%, because you have to, when you compete, play 100%. Yeah. And that's it, that's a key factor. And how did this opportunity in, in Gibraltar come about? And, and, and what was so interesting about the, the, the project? Well, uh, the, we have a, okay, I had a friend of mine, he's called Jason from Gibraltar, he's a passionate man from the game of basketball. We sometimes talking until very late. We meet up by professional business uh, that introduce us. Yeah. Uh, then he one day say, look, you know, I think you are, would you like to coach in Gibraltar? And I say, well, you know, let me talk, who is the boss? So he introduced me to John Goncalves, the president, that I'm right now and say, publicly thank you very much for for this opportunity and your trust and believe in me and the whole member of the basketball association just just to put it into context this was context this is all very very recently this is very it short amount of time it was incredibly incredible the dynamic of this sport you know it's, things happen so quickly uh, and i say to the president and i say to my friend jason i need to see the players Soon as I see the players, I will know if I have challenge or not. And the players show me that they want it. So okay, they want it, we take it. And that was the, the real challenge. And your success, you, you talk about your success, you've been to Mijas and, and, and turned uh, something from nothing, uh, pretty much. Uh, but all your success isn't down to just you, is it? Your assistant coach, Paco, must take a lot of credits. De definitely. Uh, Paco is my assistant coach. He is the guy responsible for the statistics. He working with the inside players. He's um, analyzing everything from the from the team that we're playing against. He knows everything about. I mean everything. Even though if a player have a problem with the mother in Russia, we know it. We know everything. So this is you always try to get an advantage of every situation, and it's a teamwork. Definitely. That's why he's my assistant. And uh, also Andrew Barrett, uh, another, another name we, we, we must mention. He's just explain what, what he's about. He, he was, he's already familiar with the, with the squad and, and I suppose he helps the, the transition for you to, towards the squad. Yeah, definitely. Andrew was here since about six months ago and I think he did some, some work in the team. I think uh, it's important that having him on board because uh, uh, he's already been in the team. So I want to get an advantage of all the work that he did. Yeah. So I think at the moment it's a good that he's in, he's in the team. Well, we'll continue this chat uh, after the break, but uh, we're going to take a quick break, just two minutes, don't go away.